go out to Rick Buecher, Fox Sports NBA analyst. And, uh, and now also a co-worker of Tom Brady's. As we, will, uh, we will welcome Tom Brady to the Fox Sports family uh, upon retirement. But let's start with the NBA playoffs. So I, I spoke about it earlier on the show today. I think that the NBA is in the healthiest place it's been in in a long time. If you look at the teams that are remaining in the playoffs, the competition level that we're getting in the playoffs – uh, outside of the Grizzlies losing last night, so we would have had long series. Obviously, John not being in it, which we'll get to. And the teams that are in the playoffs are all well coached, for the most part, very well run, and have developed players. And you're seeing this in the ratings. The ratings up 23. percent I think you're getting great basketball, and you're seeing patient, well run organizations being rewarded with success. And I think that's great for the league. I agree. Now, if they can just get the officiating right, we'd oh, be, yeah. we'd we can't be have everything, right? <laughs> joy. If, uh, obviously, we can't. You know what's unique about this situation, though, Joy, is just generally the uh, NBA enjoys its greatest popularity when it has a team that everybody's gunning for, when it has that super team and it has it in the major markets. And what we're seeing is while the major markets are well, let's say bigger markets are engaged. We don't have L.A., we don't have New York, and yet the numbers are going up. And I don't know whether this is a reflection of some sort of shift or whether it's the impact of social media, but the fact that you would have a John ja Morant in Memphis, a relatively new star, leading the social media engagement and the, uh, the replays of videos I think we're seeing maybe a sea change when it comes to uh, to sports, uh, but certainly the the NBA and how it gains traction and popularity. Because what we have right now, where we don't have really a favorite to win it all, and yet everybody is engaged and excited, that works for the NFL when there's parity. It generally has not worked for the NBA, and yet we are seeing uh, it, a rise in in popularity when we don't have that. So I don't know whether this is just an outlier or whether it's something new, but I just as a sports fan, I would rather see the NBA pair at the NFL and make it about parody, make the Memphis Grizzlies being great. John Morant being able to stay in Memphis and have all of the success and attention and celebrity that comes with being a great player in the NBA. I'd love to see that model work. It just hasn't in the past. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, the NBA tends to to trend younger with the fans than the NFL. And maybe that has something to do with it because there's you the younger fans didn't grow up watching the the bad boy Pistons. They didn't even really see, you know, Kobe's Lakers. They really are, you know, the LeBron generation of fans that are now getting older, they're, you know, they're in the, the purchasing age is mostly LeBron fans. Mm-hmm. Like they certainly did not see all of that and for, forget Jordan. So there's a little bit of a different energy when it comes to what these younger fans are consuming and what they like. I do think rivalries are still important, but it's like I said earlier, like it's kind of like soft rivalries. Like, yeah, we're going to play tough. Someone might step over the line, but then we're going to apologize for it. And that's just not something that you would see or hear in, you know, the eighties or nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other problem is that when we talk about rivalries or we talk about, you know, back and forths, guys have to stay in one place for that to happen. The rivalries have to happen between teams, not players. And so are we going to see a sea change in that? Normally, at this point, job blowing up, people would be asking, okay, so where's he going to go next? When's he going to go to LA? When's he going to go to the Knicks? And we're not hearing that. And Generally, we haven't heard that with international players. They're more likely to stay put. Uh, a, a Giannis Antetokounmpo staying in Milwaukee, that's generally the trend there. A player like John Moran would mean, well, he has to go to a big market. We've been hearing that, that for years with Donovan Mitchell being in Utah. So again, I'm hoping that we're arriving in a new place where a guy doesn't feel the need to have to go to a big market or a an established franchise in order to compete for titles. And I also hope that Ja and the Memphis Grizzlies are able to keep together that group because I just, 
I think it's ready-made for the Warriors and the Grizzlies for the next three, four, five years to have these battles. They're already building history right now. And when you look at whether it's Jordan Poole or Steph Curry, the battle between them and John Morant at the point guard spot, uh, the way they play very similarly, James Wiseman comes along and now he's going up against Jaron Jackson Jr. It's like all the storylines are there for the Grizzlies Warriors to be a great rivalry for years to come if everybody stays in place. Yeah, I agree. I, I was I was saying in the meeting this morning, I feel like this series has been going on for a month. There's just been so much that's happened in, in this series that yeah. it just it, it's 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 absolutely establishing history. I'm with you there that they do need to stay together. Well, Boston got a big win last night, so now that series is even. What is your expectation for that series moving forward? I do I did not expect it to go 7. I expected the Bucks to win last night and this to be a 6-game series. I'd now expect it to go seven, and I'm going to stay with the Bucks, but they need some guys to step up, and they need to put a muzzle on Al Horford at 35 years old. I, if you had told me, yeah, you know what? You know what's going to happen? Al is going to not only dunk on Giannis Antetokounmpo, <laughs> he's going to drive past him and dunk on him, and he's going to get a career playoff high, 30 points, in a game four where the Bucks have an opportunity to put a stranglehold on the series. Did not expect any of that. I do believe Giannis is playing well. He's not playing great. The three's not falling. The free throws have been a little iffy. But more than anything else, nobody's coming along to join the party. Uh, Jason Tatum is getting an Al Horford. He's getting a Marcus Smart. He's getting, uh, he's getting help. And I look to Bobby Portis as the biggest absentee to this point. I expected, look, when P.J. Tucker left and went to Miami, I was not worried about it because I thought Bobby Portis was ready to step in. I thought he was a better uh, offensive weapon, and I thought defensively he could do enough to make up for it. He did that against Chicago. When he did it against Chicago, they, they won in a walk. I expected to see more of that in this series, and I think it's more vital that he give them that in this series. But 15 minutes and four points uh, in the last game is not going to get it done. So we'll have to see whether uh, Mr. Googly Eyes, uh, Bobby Buckets, is able to step up and give them a little more in this, ne- this next game. Somebody has to. Drew Holiday, uh, Bobby Portis, uh, Grayson Allen, another big, big game. Somebody has to join the party with Giannis if the Bucks are going to get this done. We're talking to Rick Buecher on The Herd. Uh, someone said that that P.J. Tucker move was going to be significant. I don't know who that could possibly be, but when it happened, uh, it's, someone it's said not, it. It's not significant yet, doctor. She, she don't might start, be a doctor now. Don't start assuming. <laughs> <laughs> Miami, is, uh, Miami is in a dogfight themselves. Uh, they okay? they so sure are. Let's not jump to conclusions. They sure are. We have, uh, we have two minutes left, so let's go there then. Uh, what do you think of Harden? Is he going to string together a series of these performances? We know Miami Harden is very different than some other cities. Yeah. No, th- I mean, this has been the problem. I, I never doubted that, that Harden could have a game like this. But what we expect from the James Hardens, what we expect, expect from guys who've been named to the 70 all-time greats, is that they are consistently great. And that has not been it. And I don't know about, I don't, you know, I hate to downplay what Harden did, but the three was falling and he was getting calls at the rim. And the Philadelphia 76ers seemed to have bought into the idea that Harden was washed. I don't think they played him uh, particularly hard. I believe that that is a, or the, the Heat played him particularly hard. I, I, I expect that that is going to be different in this next game and that Harden is going to be tested and that lack of conditioning is going to show itself once again. So I, I'm not buying that Harden has suddenly leaped into, you know, a time machine and is going back to the Harden that we're used to who gave us consistent performances. I would be more likely to bet on that th- this was a one-off and we'll see Miami Harden once again. Well, for the heat's sake, I hope you're right. But it was fun to watch James Harden back as himself for, for that game. And he was, he was playing with for a sure. lot of energy. It was fun to watch. Thanks so much for jumping on, Rick. Appreciate you. Have a great week. You have it, doctor. You too. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.